We are recording. <laughs> okay. Okay, starting in three. <laughs> Gotta wait for the I hope you're, opening. I hope you got that whole time. Hi, this is Diggity and Diggity, <laughs> and I'm here with Diggity, 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 and special guest Diggity. Whatever, last time I was going to announce you guys, you didn't even give me an opportunity. And Diggity <laughs> EX. Okay. For a Diggity free-for-all. With all sorts of things I'm not even going to mention myself in this intro. I'm going to be like, Moltrap and Clazard. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Starting in 3, 2, 1, play. Hey guys, welcome to another English commentary with Diggity, Moltrap, and Clazard. It's going to be on Loki 2, and it's going to be the final match between Orion and Jamie. Whoever wins this advances to the round of 8. Whoever loses this is out of the MSL for this season. And it looks like we have Jamie in orange at the 3 o'clock position. Or the upper right, if you prefer. And we have uh, <laughs> Orion in the bottom left hand corner, and I didn't catch the color. We'll see here in just a second. Looks like it is white. Yes, indeed. This is game three, and it should be exciting. We've seen um, some pretty good play out of both these players. I think a little bit better play out of Jangbi, except um, the last game he just kind of uh, misinterpreted what was going on, basically, and, and um, didn't react very well. Um, so, again, kind of, in my opinion, uh, backing up my opinion that <laughs> Changbi is is one of the more inferior Protoss playing these days um, as far as pro gamers go. Um, but yeah, I mean, he has been playing solidly and you, you won against some really good people in uh, the group stages before this. And uh, he appears to be going to, uh, and trying to take um, his, his lower natural, which is interesting. Uh, I was kind of curious. Well, it, it kind of makes sense because, I mean, that's the standard, you know, quote-unquote Bisu build. But uh, on this map, you also have your protected expansion down behind your base, which would make it so that he could easily hold his ramp and still get a quick natural, um, which we've seen uh, work very well on the new map, Troy. And so I, I wasn't sure if he was going to do something like that. But um, And he's going to get the scout denied, too, interestingly enough. Yeah, absolutely brilliant play by Ryan, getting that drone on the ramp to actually deny the scout. I'm very impressed by that, and I think Zerg players don't do it often enough, but uh, especially with a, with a map like Loki, because what it means is that the Jambi does not know whether Orion is choosing to either expand using the protected expo, or whether he's actually choosing to go get a, get, uh, to go for some sort of a rush build, which is going to force basically uh, Jambi to put a, at least a couple of photon cannons down with his force straight away. And uh, Orion actually looks like he's going to put the spawning pool. Uh, okay, he's putting, okay, this is crazy, Orion's actually putting the second hatchery in his main, I don't know what he's trying to do. Here. He could have easily taken that Protect Expo, but he's actually <coughs> to, uh, choosing to put that second hatchery in his main. Uh, Jambi, meanwhile, is uh, sending a second probe out because he really needs to barrel through that drone. And he feels, <coughs> excuse me, just caught myself, he feels that he can probably barrel through by using the combination. So Orion's strategy is going to be exposed here with the combination of those two probes. And uh, Jambi's not going to be found because that, that drone is going to take him out. But he's bought himself a significant amount of time with his strategy. Uh, and he's not going to be able to get a second drone up in time. So, so good play by Orion. <coughs> excuse me, better play by Jambi for having adapted and bring the second probe out, because had he not done that, he would have been in huge trouble. Now he knows exactly what his opponent is doing, and he's just going to plop down a lot of photon cans. Being... No, okay, this is this is crazy here, because actually, um, or um, looks like he's actually, Jangbi's chosen to put the Nexus down first, although he might have chosen, uh, put one photon can down. I didn't get a spot on that, I don't know if one of you guys did, but... Um, I have to say that I think the re I think it's wise. It's a wise decision. Just while we're talking on that, it's a wise decision, and he's actually harassing his opponent's economy as well uh, by using those uh, by using those two probes that he sent out. Because obviously he hurt his own economy by committing by forcing him to be forced to commit two probes to that scout. Uh, but I have to say I, I think it's a wise decision to put that forge out at the National Expo for Protoss because what that means is uh, you're automatically defending, and another drone gets killed for uh, Orion. He we can't afford this right now, uh, but his second hatchery is going to be up now. Uh, but as I said, uh, it, it, it is a good strategy because it means that you can later get that third nexus easier without having to uh, then focus further on defense uh, and he's now putting down the gateway and the two photon cannons coming down so uh, I, I think we're going to see some sort of a timing push from uh, Orion uh, and I have to say it's an interesting strategy to say the least and it was brilliant of him to get the drone block but uh, Jangmi uh, up to the task yeah I'm not really yeah, sure I really feel like uh I'm sorry, go ahead. Orion's a oh, little bit in trouble here. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Orion, a little bit of trouble here. Looks like he's uh, now, t as you can see, second uh, uh, expansion already up <clears throat> for Jangby in the meantime. Zergling's out in the field. And I think what Orion was trying to do is he was going to try to block his front door, deny the information, get speed upgraded Zerglings, and just push out from there. But it looks instead he's switching to a Hydralisk build. Uh, we'll see if he decides to do that two hatch Hydra build we saw that uh, July ended up doing against Bisu, which was successful for him. And that might be successful again if he can continue to deny the scout. We'll see how it works out in the meantime. I think this that's his last shot, really. Uh, as you can see, Jangvi was expecting the Zerglings to be pushing up now. 
to just seeing, uh, basically just to see a flood of Zerglings at this point, uh, which was really what I think was uh, more signified by those two hatcheries down. Really, it's going to be hard with just that single hatchery, uh, no expansion taken, and the protected expansion not taken to do a single hatch build with the Hydralis, because you don't have second gas, you don't have additional minerals. Has connected. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> and, uh, so, <laughs> hey, combat. Uh, but in the meantime, it looks like uh, Orion... Uh, basically missed his opportunity if he was going to go with links. I think these Hydalis might be supplementary along with these Zerglings, and we'll see if the if he gets range upgrade or something like that and kind of does a combo here, uh, Zerglings plus Hydalis. I feel like this might is just kind of a desperation attempt because of his original plan was spoiled. Third Photon Cannon down, and that looks like a very formidable front, the Stargate going down. So Ryan's going to have really, uh, he's just going to have to micromanage his way out of this, and honestly, uh, as I've said many times before, Ryan's not known for absolutely fantastic micromanagement. He's now pushing out with four Hydalis and a group, of, uh, I would say about a control group and a half of Zerglings, and we'll see if this ends up working out. I have no idea what yeah, Orion is doing. <laughs> I was going to say, I have no idea what Orion is doing right now, and, and especially since he got it scouted out and he's still uh, continuing and persisting with it. Basically, this is Jangbi's game to do with what he wants, because Jangbi knows what's going on, um, and it's up to Jangbi to, to adapt to, I mean, he's got to know that some sort of rush is coming. Uh, some sort of um, quick push is coming of, of some sort, and he is blocking off his door pretty significantly and putting up extra cannons. Um, I'm surprised that he, he isn't putting um, maybe an extra. Well, actually, I didn't see if there's another gateway down. And it looks like Orion coming in here trying to attack, but he doesn't. He's kind of a paltry force attacking here. And probes coming off the line, they're going to be able to hold off those zerglings pretty easily. And as soon as those cannons warp in, they're not even going to need to warp in because um, this attack is going to get repelled by just those two cannons and a few zealots. Jang be losing two zealots and a few probes in that entire encounter, and really, and now he's got an expansion up, and he's got superior tech, superior economy, and superior basically everything. I'm pretty sure there's not very much way that uh, Orion can come back in this game now. He doesn't even have an expansion up right now. Yeah, this game is pretty much over. Uh, I think Diggity called it right when he first said that uh, Orion was in a difficult position and Moltrap has, has, sealed, uh, has sealed Orion's fate for him. Uh, and fortunately for Orion, he did go with that all-in build. It was a brilliant maneuver to try and block off and deny the scout with the drone on a map like Loki. I don't think you could do it on any other map. Loki is the only map where you could do something like that and leave your opponent guessing. But the uh, was up to the task and, and, and really that decision to send that second probe out really clinched it for him because he managed to get, get in the scout and was there for knew exactly what his opponent was up to, had the defense, was ready and waiting, and there was literally nothing Orion could do from that point on. Unfortunately for Orion, he decided to go all in with a pair of kings, um, and, and then it turned out that Jangmi had a pair of aces uh, in his hand. So um, Jangmi, Jangmi showing some resilience after some very indifferent play in the, in the second game of this best of three, uh, but uh, he's, he's renewed our fate somewhat, I have to say, and in this. Uh, but though I, I guess he hasn't really been tested, uh, uh, but nevertheless he's shown he's shown good games, sense, good awareness, and, and has, has shown himself to be a very competent player, to say the least. And it's just a matter of time before he closes this game out now with the Dark Templar out, as well as the Corsairs. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, because... Uh, Basically, Orion has one more shot at this. He might get lucky, and he's got to protect that Overlord uh, with those Corsairs out in the field. He's got to protect that Overlord if he's going to get any sort of additional attack out. Right now, I think he's just bringing up those Corsairs to be annoying, and I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, Jangby's just going to ignore that front, his front door, bring the Dark Templar all the way around, and uh, just go <laughs> go after Jang uh, I'm sorry, Orion's main and end it there. Uh, a couple Hydralisks here waiting in the meantime. More Overlords being attacked in the field, and uh, I would expect it just as soon as maybe one or two more Hydralisks, or probably not even that. Yeah, here comes the push now, and we'll see if Jangby can defend against this. I think he's going to be able to defend it against it just fine. Uh, again, going to have to rely on a lot of micromanagement. He's going to get that forge down, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. Reinforcements getting annihilated as they're coming in, and now that Overlord going to go down to those Corsairs. That could be the difference right there. Oh, he managed to hold the Overlord! That could actually uh, shift it up. Oh, unbelievable. I thought that would just be enough, oh but God. I guess uh, pushing in, Jang B... Yeah, Jang B did not manage to hold, so that forge going down, this could actually be significant, because if he can manage to get the rest of these uh, Hydralisks up, one more Corsair, uh, he's not actually producing an additional Corsair, I'm surprised. Uh, so so Jang B actually might be in a little bit of trouble here, we'll see. Uh, I still feel like Jang B has a, a larger economy, he has more uh, more being produced, but his front door being assailed, those Hydralisks are now range upgraded, and more Hydralisks joining in, and cannons do not do well, blocking off his front door with other Hydralisks against these Dark Templar. Uh, and now, as you can see, those Zealots just trying to hold against the storm. 
Uh, I'm surprised he hasn't actually produced a second Corsair to try to take out that Overlord in the meantime, because I think his one hope would probably be to get some Dark Templar out. He's already got the Gateway inside his base, uh, just producing a lot of Gateway. I guess he's just going to try to hold out for now, getting a second Forge up. Just going to rely on Orion taking his time, which it looks like he is doing. Uh, I would actually assume as soon as the second Hydralis Force joins up, he's going to get another shot at this. And uh, do you think... Wow, and then in the meantime, just going to try to break that front door. And here we're going to see it. We're going to see it right here. Uh, another Hydralis pushing out, but the Hydralis is going to get annihilated. And we're going to see actually both players inside base. Hydralis pushing up, going, trying to pick off those Zealots, try to draw them out uh, like what, like Jang B did for himself in Game 1. Uh, Dark Templar in the field. Looks like a Sunken Colony going to take care of them. And uh, yeah, this is going to come down to a micromanagement battle right here, but I, th I think Jang B is going to be able to hold this out with the, this sizable Zealot force right here. Wow, yeah. And so Orion GG's, he says... <clears throat> he knew that that was all he had, and, and the DT is going in and slaughtering his economy, and that was his last push. And uh, again, I, I have to say, I, I think it was a little bit unwise of uh, Orion to um, to really kind of persist in that. And uh, even though he knew that, that, well, I mean, obviously it almost kind of worked out for him, but he should have adapted somehow. Or I think he probably could have switched over and tried to go for some econ. He wasn't that far behind in the beginning of the game, I don't think, and especially with the fact that he knew that um, the Protoss player, Jangby, was going to try and tech up, um, he would have some breathing room to try and use the, the Zerg um, swarming capabilities to, to just expand, and, uh, and he had a couple quick expansions nearby, so I don't know, that's what I think he would have done, I, I, I could be wrong about that, but I think that would have worked out a little bit better other than just kind of persisting with a, like, one base um, build with only 10 drones mining against a Protoss player with about um, 40 probes. Yeah, unfortunately, two, Zerg, uh, two Zergs kicked out of the, uh, of the uh, MSL now. We saw uh, Quandra go out earlier, and uh, unfortunately now uh, we've seen um, Orion go out as well, and that's unfortunate to say the least. Uh, but I've got to disagree with Molchop on that. I don't think Orion had a choice. His build was very much an all-in build. Um, you know, one base Zerg, even with two hatcheries versus a two-gas Protoss, I think there was no hope or, or in hell of him catching up in economy or tech, and he really just had to commit himself at the mid-range game with Hydralis. I'm surprised he managed to do as much damage as, as he did. That Overlord surviving was critical. It was poor play by Jangbi. He didn't micro those courses very well. If he'd come at the Overlord from a different angle, he might have been able to take it out, or if he had supplemented those courses with even a couple of Zenos to draw the Hydralis fire, he might have been able to take the Overlord out, uh, forcing Orion to mac micro a little bit more. So he was careless. He almost let Orion in through the back door. Uh, but at the end of the day, he had such superior... And it just shows you how far behind Jangbi wa uh, Orion was, that despite that, he wasn't able to level the game. Those Dark Templar are doing a good job of keeping half of uh, Orion's Hydralis back in, in play and allowed Jangbi to get uh, enough of a Zealot Force out to defend with his Photon Cannons combined. And in the end, Orion just didn't have enough... Uh, and the superior Protoss economy told. Uh, but but uh, solid-ish play by Jangbi, still a few chinks there that I think probably uh, Jadong or July, depending on if they get through, could expose. Um, and and I'm, I'm very sad to see two of the Zerg players go out so early. Yeah, uh, usually I like seeing Zerg go, go further in, but you know, only three Protoss players in the field, and it looks like uh, we've got at least one advancing, I guess two advancing as a spoiler for me, uh, Cal taking Quanro. <clears throat> but, uh, <laughs> no comment. But, uh, but yeah, really, Orion had one chance, I think, if he was going to get back in it, and it was going to take some godly micro. And uh, really, yeah, uh, he put up a good fight, but just wasn't there. Uh, in the meantime, just lost his entire back door. And, and yeah, again, I like what Klausert said, where he just shows you how far he was behind. Uh, even losing that gateway, losing that forge, in the back of his base, Jangbi could just set up uh, just another, what was that, four gateways, three gateways, and just supplant some reinforcements there before Orion ever had a shot at cracking his natural. And that just shows you how far B was behind. I'm surprised that he, uh, even going with a kind of, uh, I think he was initially trying to go for a Zergling push. I'm surprised that he still didn't take that, uh, that natural just in case. I mean, you can plop it down there, and yeah, it takes another... Mm, five, six seconds to get up the ramp, but I think it's worth it just to be in a position uh, coming down the line. But yeah, uh, I got to give good game sense to Jang B, realizing that he really needed to get that scout in just in case and bringing up that second probe, and that was all the difference in this game. I just realized that at the beginning of the uh, game, I mentioned a strategy being done on Troy, and I actually meant Demon's Forest, not Troy. Nevertheless. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed <laughs> <Okay>. that. <laughs> Any last thoughts between you two guys? No, um, I I, I don't think Jangbi's. Well, I was I, I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna call it now. I don't think Jangbi's gonna go much further in this competition. I think whoever he meets in the next round will probably take him down. 
Yeah, he's kind of the nine ten of this grouping. This uh, I'm season of the MSL. Of yeah, so we have our nine ten officially. The player who advanced, who we kind of feel probably shouldn't have. Um, the crappy seed. I, I, the crap seed who will uh, probably in next season grab whomever. Who knows though? Uh, has it has it, a nine ten seed ever turned out to be awesome down the line? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, likewise. I mean, Mania was okay, but he ended up getting no, dumped wasn't. pretty quickly. Actually, uh, I thought he was. I thought he was okay. I didn't think he was great. Can't I just thought he was mediocre. Rock. Can't stop. A lot the better rock. than. <laughs> I thought he was a lot better than uh, say nine ten. Uh, the rock can't stop. The rock. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, speaking of it. that, yeah, yeah, six seeds out, so a lot of stuff going on, and we're a bit scattered on this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thanks for listening.